Welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning. So happy to have our friends from the United Way here. We've got Terry Bate and Robin Seaman. Good morning to both of you. Good Good morning. morning. And we do want to remind everybody, this is not your grandma's United Way. You guys really have reinvented yourselves uh, in new ways to serve people in need in the community. And... um, uh, we want to find out what all, what that is all about. That so. is great. And it's exciting to think of all the changes that have happened. In fact, Susie, I've been there only for two years. And I had a wonderful meeting recently with someone who said, Terry, in your two years there, what would you say has changed? And I was able to say, wow, what I see has changed is that we've been able to identify places of need in our community to address the root causes mm-hmm. of health, we focus on health, education, and financial stability. But what we've we've also done is learned that there are places in our community that had gaps. And so we've been able to create direct services where, especially in financial stability, which is Robin's area, her Mm -hmm. forte, that we can have put together amazing programs that we can go in and help other programs that are happening at our funded partners, agencies that we have worked with to really identify what programs we can help them with. So we have come into a space to find solutions and to mobilize our caring community to help Mm -hmm. us deliver those solutions. It's just a different delivery system, isn't it? It is. It is. And I love what you're saying, though, because you were able to find those gaps. I went to a recent community meeting, found out what is the percentage of people living below the poverty line here? It's it's like like a ridiculously high number. And you probably can tell me. But I mean, it was like 60 percent. And I might be wrong. Um, not quite that high. Okay. But 12.6% of the households in Stark County are living in poverty. And an additional of that group, there's... Um, 36, is it 36.6% of Stark County residents cannot meet their basic needs. That's what it was, almost 40%. Almost 40%. And that's those that are above the poverty line, Mm -hmm. but yet are just struggling. They can't buy groceries. They can't put gas in their car and take care of just basic needs to survive. And then what a slippery slope, because if you can't put gas in your car, how do you get to a job to be able to earn what you need to put gas in your car? That's true. It's a vicious circle. And I would say to you, it's not not people that live in a certain area. It's your neighbor. It's your mm-hmm. sales clerk. It's the person that takes care of your dog. It's your neighbor that you walk the street with at, when you're doing a community walk. Or it's the person you work with. It's just the face of the person is so different than what one would assume. Right. And you know what United Way has done, and this was worldwide, or at least United Way America, they have learned that the the way for us to really articulate this in our own community is to talk about this as one person. So our one person is Alice. And so everywhere you go, you meet Alice. And who is Alice? As- Alice is asset limited, mm-hmm. income constrained, employed. Uh. Alice is employed. Alice does have no assets. Mm -hmm. She is working at minimum wage, and sometimes, actually, Susie, it takes two adults Mm -hmm. working at minimum wage, and they're still not making it. Mm -hmm. So their choices are food or drugs. And then when you put children Mm -hmm. into that family, and so there are over 19,000 households that are in poverty, and then more to that who are what we would call Alice households. And 19,000 where? In the country? In the Stark County. In Stark County? In Stark County, yes. Uh, so it's shocking. And there's, 300, there's 152 households in Stark County. And so the percentage of Alice or in poverty is 36%. And Alice, again, this face that we're putting on it is access limited, income, income constrained, constrained and employed, yet employed. Employed. And so it's 55,869 households that are either employed as Alice mm-hmm. or in poverty. And the in poverty means they're not working because they can't even get to a job. Okay, this is really or, surprising. Or they yes. could be working at a very low wage. And depending on their household size, for someone to be considered in poverty, 100% of the poverty level, a family of four 
earns about two thousand ninety two dollars a month. So that's oh. the, that gives them um, that gives them about sixty nine dollars a day for them to live on, and that includes paying their house, paying their yes. so they're working, but and and they find themselves in a situation where they just can never get above or get, catch a breath or catch a break yes. to move above and move beyond. Well, and then when you're working probably more than one job then it, to be able to get what you need to feed children and then just school supplies and things like that, that makes it really tough to go back to school and get what you need to get a better job to earn more too. I mean, it just you there's so many hours in the day. There's only so many. That's true. Pretty tough, but it's hard to believe when the economy seems to be pretty good. You know, it seems like we've never seen unemployment at such a, a low right. numbers. Right. But these jobs I'm hearing from you are not paying enough for people to make it. A and then, of, oh, I'm sorry. A lot of the jobs that are coming into our community, some of the fastest growing gro- jobs are service jobs, home health aides, STNAs, mm-hmm. which are lower paying jobs making around $10 an hour. Mm-hmm. $10 an hour is not enough if someone's working full time to support a family. Right. Right. Even... There's not one city in the United States where someone can earn minimum wage and afford a two-bedroom apartment. No. So it's it's multiple of things. It's the income they're earning, but yet beyond that, it's the cost of living, which Stark County is pretty affordable. Pretty place to great. Live, That's right? why people we, love living here. But it's just tough when you're when you're dealing with seven hundred dollars a month rent because you have a household of two children and yourself. Yes. And then all of a sudden your med- your benefits from the public benefits from the SNAP benefits and the daycare starts going down. So you you end up having less spending power the more money you make. So it makes it a a, a tough a tough time. I say it's like a cliff. You get to a certain point. I, we often show a movie called The Benefit Cliff and it talks about someone making minimum wage a mother with two children, and she starts out part-time, and then she moves to full-time, and she starts getting a raise, and she's doing pretty good. Then she gets to a certain point where, like, her daycare stops. Mm. And all of a sudden, she has to come up with $1,600 to pay daycare that's no longer subsidized. And then her SNAP benefits stop. Because they're saying what? That she's suddenly making too much? She's making above the income threshold to be able to receive those benefits. Uh, So then her spending power drops, and it takes till she's making about $25 an hour to have the same spending power. It's not an incentive at all to do better because you're going to lose so many benefits suddenly when you're having to pay for them yourself. True, and I think the Alice population are those that aren't quite qualifying for benefits. Mm -hmm. So that's why their struggle is is harder, um, but yet they maintain their job, they maintain two jobs. But, a lot of people I work with have two or more jobs. But then they are having to pay for their child's immunizations at the doctor because they can't get into the free clinic. Correct. Okay. And Susie, I think that this morning you and our listeners would be very shocked to hear what the largest unmet need in our community in Stark and County is. What is that? Transportation. It's the greatest unmet need. So here we have people who are really struggling to to get jobs. I was talking to a woman recently, and she works in Alliance, and she lives in Canton. And she was telling me we she needed a bus pass, and we were able to make sure she had a bus pass, forty dollars for a month. And it's kind of like any time she needs a bus, it's she can use it. But she was saying, "Oh, this is such a blessing." Now I have to be at my bus stop right outside my apartment at five thirty in the morning. And I'm going to go downtown to the central change area, and I'm going to get on a bus there, and then I'm going to get on a bus, and it's going to take me all the way through Louisville for me to get to Alliance. And it was going to be an hour and a half, one way, for her to go from Canton to her job in Alliance. In Alliance. An hour and a half to get there. An hour and a half for her to get there. And then she has to come home. (sighs) And then you think about people who are working midnights, and there are no buses, and so... Pretty soon what happens is this person misses work, and an, and another reason they miss work is because of their kids getting sick, and they can't have them in daycare if they're mm-hmm. sick. Mm-hmm. And pretty soon that is part of that slippery slope that Robin is talking about where they lose their job because it starts with transportation and then all these this is very depressing. How do you two go to work every day without getting totally depressed? Well, let me tell you. Okay. <laughs> because what I love about being at United Way and 
and the vision that our leaders have, including Rob, and she doesn't sleep because she's always thinking of a solution. Mm. And so there are so many wonderful solutions where we meet people who come to our office, who call us, who get help. And, and can I tell you a story? Please. So right now we're in the middle of our VITA clinic, and that is our, we love acronyms, don't we? <laughs> I guess you got them. That is our Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. Say it again. Oh, Volunteer that's Volunteer Income in- Tax Assistance. Great. So, so s- how many volunteers do we have, Robin? We there? have over 100 volunteers. Right awesome. Now. And they're, they're experienced. They're trained through the IRS. And they prepare people's taxes for them free of charge. And how do you qualify to have them prepare your taxes? So you, if for a single person, you be, need to be making $65,000 or less a year. Okay. And for a married couple, 90000 or less. Okay. So the income limits are quite high. Mm-hmm. Only not, I mean, less than 25% of the individuals that qualify for that service in Stark County use it. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's better than I would have guessed. Right. But we still, to give you an idea, this year... Last year, we did 5,600 tax returns. This year, we're on target to do about 6,300 tax returns oh, wow. with those volunteers. So they, yeah. it keeps us busy. Yes. <laughs> and are they already at hard at work? Oh, my goodness. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> and so Mondays yeah. is our clinic where they come to our office, and we've got volunteers in there, and they've got appointments, and they're waiting. And a couple Mondays ago, there was a grandma who came in, and she had her two grandchildren with her. And she, we start talking to to the people because we've got time and we want to hear their story and she was telling us these are my grandchildren and her parents are going through a terrible separation oh. and these two kids are going to go into the foster system no. and I don't know what's going to happen to them and we had just this year been able to become part of the governor's coat Giveaway, I was calling it the great coat giveaway. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we had 150 coats that we were able to Mm -hmm. work with other agencies and programs in our community. We were kind of like the trustees of the coats. And we had some there. And we asked the grandma if her boys, these boys, could use a coat. And the look on these boys' faces, Mm -hmm. they were able to go over and pick out their coats. Mm -hmm. And the one little boy, about five years old, he had his coat. And the grandma has tears coming down her eyes. And then he said, do you have any shoes? Oh, I need a pair of shoes. And I would say, how often would a five-year-old little boy ask for shoes? That's true. That's true, right? They're going to ask for all kinds of things, but shoes. And so what happened? So we were, we were the good... For, had the good fortune of being recipient of some gift cards that we keep um, for emergencies. So we were able to get him some gift cards to be able to go buy shoes. So it was so cute. Him and his grandma came back a couple days later, and he had his little winter coat on, and he was just smiling ear to ear. And I got the pleasure of walking out of the building with him, and he's holding his gift cards right in front of his face, mm. and he was so excited that he was going to be able to get some new shoes. Oh. So it was a good feeling to know that we were able to help with that, with that need. So is that one of the things that when we're thinking, how can I help United Way? Is gift cards a nice gift? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's so much need. We have individuals that are looking for gas gift cards, grocery mm-hmm. gift cards. People start their jobs. We helped a gentleman today get his work boots and a pair of jeans nice. to start his job. So just those types of things. And we referred him for that job. Mm-hmm. We did. Oh, nice. And so as we are busy meeting basic needs and then we've got our vita program that is amazing for people we also spend most of our time robin is implementing programs that are really addressing the root causes and so robin you can talk about one of your favorite that you feel is really working on addressing root causes and we are going to do that right after these words you're listening to our community Welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas visiting with Terry Bate and Robin Seaman. They're from United Way. And you were about to tell me some critical information. To, what, what was that, Robin? So over the course of the last year and a half, two years, we have um, been really thinking a lot about our financial stability programming that's in our co- community in um, 
wonder, what could we really do to focus on root causes and collaborate with our partners to make yes. a huge difference in our community? And in 2017, we launched what would be called the Financial Prosperity Center. It's located at 30th Street, and um, it works right along with the workforce development piece. Individuals seeking pos- employment will oftentimes come there, and then we'll work with them around their financial situation, perhaps put them in budget coaching, mm-hmm. help them work on some social skills, the whole nine yards. But we found that the need was so much more than that. So we really are trying to focus on relationship building with those individuals and resource connection. We, we know that social capital is oftentimes lacking. And w- many of us have found a job or done, got access to something based on someone we knew, right? Well, pretty much every single time. Right. You know, and uh, some people say, oh, it's who you know. But I don't think that's a bad thing. It's who you know. Oftentimes it is. Yeah, yes. So it, no more people. It's it really. I think it really. I really think it helps when um, yes. you have a, a different group of individuals that can provide you a di- different perspective than yes. you wouldn't necessarily think of. We do mm-hmm. become products of our environment, right? Um, so we we have realized that through the prosperity services that we were offering at o- Ohio Means Jobs, that those relationships have been key. So w- in the process of that, we've had the opportunity to also work in the schools. Um, with the Get Connected program and to provide some other money management classes, working with youth, and then us, and additionally have been fortunate enough to be able to launch something called Prosperity at Work, where we'll be working with employees at places of businesses to assist them with non-HR issues that are causing issues mm-hmm. with them at work. And that happens a lot. There's a lot of individuals in our community that are in the sandwiched population, oftentimes working with grandma in the house and their grandchildren, yes. which brings a, about a myriad of issues that the stress and the issues that surround that oftentimes impact your ability to be focused on your job. Mm-hmm. So we're working with those and looking at um, removing barriers for individuals there. So the resource connection piece we find is really key in removing barriers. It gives someone, makes them a more stable employee. How do we do that? How do we remove these barriers? It's really sitting down and taking the time to talk to someone and discover what their issues are through relationship building. Someone gets comfortable with you, you can have them finally figure out on their own with you just guiding the conversation sometimes yes. uh, what what the issues are and then really what is the underlying issue for that. It really focuses on root issues with them, them taking the lead, uh, us working on goals around that to help them eliminate that and move forward. How do I get past that hurdle? And maybe it's not as big of a hurdle as they think it is yes. because we have the re- resources or know the person that can help them solve that. Sometimes putting a name on something gets it down to its real size Truly. and you see oh there is something here that addresses that we've got resources in our community that address that rather than just that boogeyman that we know something is constantly on the back of our mind worrying us so true and i and i s- would say to you that we have m- amazing partners in Stark County. Mm-hmm. The resources that are available in our community are just fabulous, but a lot of people don't know those resources. So anything we can do to introduce someone to something that can make a difference, that's what we want to do. And to be able to connect them. and that's Connect them, absolutely. What, that's the united way. Absolutely. <laughs> Connecting them all. <laughs> so you just did a commercial for us. Thank <laughs> you. You're welcome. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> So the the exciting thing that has come come from this is that we have found also that in the schools, we were doing a program called Get Connected. So that's our prosperity at school. We have also found through the care team, local care teams that's in all the school districts, that many of the families that come in and work with their family support specialists that's located in the school around issues, oftentimes there's a deeper issue. So they'll come with a presenting problem, and we and we want to triage and solve that problem. And the family support specialist does an amazing job at that, but yet we know that there's an underlying deeper root cause. So we have been fortunate to lately be going into the schools and working with some of those families or, or around discovery and helping them figure out what do I really need to do so that that doesn't happen again. Mm-hmm. Can so, I tell a story about that? Sure. Our, our care teams are in all the school districts in Stark County. And literally, they come together once a week around a table at a school, and the care team is made up of the principal and the building administrator and the nurse and 
everyone who are champions for that student. Mm -hmm. And so they come and they say, Johnny didn't eat his lunch and he hasn't eaten his lunch all week. Does anyone know what this problem is? The family support specialist, which is a resource connector, is then the one who will call the family. And so we had this one case where she developed a relationship with the mom. The mom was very reticent about talking to her until over a cup of coffee every now and then and probably more than usual. The mom said, you know, uh, this is crazy, but my husband has PTSD. And the only thing I think can help my child is a dog. Um, and our family support specialist thought, oh, wow, well, this is very different than anything we've ever done. But mm -hmm. she listened more and she researched about dog therapy and what it could mean. And so she accompanied this mom, walked with her in this journey. The family went to a shelter. They found a dog. Mm -hmm. They brought that dog home. And it totally has changed that family. Oh, my. The little boy came in after the holidays that year, and the teacher had something to talk to him about. He wasn't as uh, sheltered, and he opened up, and he said he sleeps with the dog every night, and everybody takes turns mm. feeding the dog. Probably helps the dad as well. Helps the dad. Mm. And now his grades are better, and mm. it's been two years, and he's on the road to success. Yes. And that all started in third grade. Wow. He's in fifth grade, and he's doing great. And our family support specialist follows up. But it takes somebody identifying that. It takes somebody noticing, this little boy's not eating his lunch. What's up? And I will say our schools care so much about their mm -hmm. students. And mm -hmm. the care teams are amazing. And so many, they've done They've gotten washers in the schools to wash clothes because they realize that wow. kids are coming and they're not they're not in clothes that sh they should be in. Some of them don't have clothes at home, and they get to the root causes, which if you think about this generation of the younger student, and care teams start at grade one, wow. to be able to solve these issues early might prevent us in this generation to have to step in with financial stability since they'll learn, and that's our hope, and that's yes. part of the root cause. Wouldn't it be great if you just put yourself out of business? Oh. That's been my goal. We were just talking about that. <laughs> I've been doing this since 86, yes. Yes. and um, uh, that's my goal. And it hasn't uh -huh. happened yet, but if I yeah. could work myself out of a job, what a way to retire, right? Mm, that, would be, that would be an awesome yeah. way to go out the door. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need any of this anymore. I love that you have the three pillars, and I don't know if you call them pillars, but I think of them as three pillars, yes. so that health and education and financial stability. And really, there's not such a thing anymore as a United Way agency. The, you work with the programs that provide these things, health, education, mm -hmm. financial stability, mm -hmm be that whatever agency or organization or church is providing those kinds of things. Yes? Yeah. Do I have this right? Yes. You do. You so we're do. helping 63 programs out in our community mm. that happen to reside at 37 agencies. Mm. And so the programs are what they come forward with and basically say, here's what we're doing and here's how it aligns with our community's goals. Because United Way doesn't create these goals on our own. Right. It's a community process. This is what the community has charged us with, mm -hmm. is really we want to pay attention to health, to education, and financial stability. Well, we've, we've talked a lot about financial stabi stability. Hope we can get back to it. But what's taking place with health and education? So I would say to you, um, the when you look at some of the programs that we fund for health, and if we even tie it back to Alice, many mm -hmm. of those, many of the impacts um, it all goes on the together. Alice life, such as delaying or skipping preventative health, we have we fund the programs such as ComQuest Services, Access Health Start County, um, Child and Adolescence Services, Pathway yes. of Caring. So, and there's Shipley Margaret Shipley Child Care Child Health Clinic. So those services are available to still be able to assist someone that's in that right in that area so it's in the alice one of the alice, alice people people yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. um it what it does when those services are funded and the partners do step in to assist someone it helps people not call off work sick mm -hmm. therefore they keep their job right if their child's healthy less less absenteeism as well and productivity we know that it spirals when you start missing days and we know children get sick it causes workplace issues and oftentimes you lose your job mm -hmm. so knowing that we can work with we have the programs that are funded under 
the health health um, pillar, as you would call it, mm-hmm. um, can make such a huge difference on that Alice family or anyone in Stark County accessing yes. those services. Yes. And one of the programs that we do fund is at Beacon Charitable Pharmacy, which is a pharmacy that's been created in the last 10 years. And it is a pharmacy that people can come to and get their medications without having to pay for them. Oh, and it's an wonderful. amazing blessing in it's our wonderful. community to Absolutely. have something like that. Wow. What about education? And that's got so much to do with financial stability so as well. So I'm going to go back to, I would say to you, the education piece that I think is absolutely amazing is the care team. That mm-hmm. piece just really is a holistic approach to wrapping all types of services uh, yes. around an individual the Get Connected program, which works with kids that are trying to determine what they want to be when they grow up um, and really focuses on introducing them to non-traditional uh, type uh, jobs that you wouldn't necessarily think of. Mm-hmm. Those are key. Working with them, providing mentoring opportunities. I think when we look at that program, it looks at working with that youth at a young age to let them know they can think big. Let's think aspirationally. I can do something different than what I want, than I thought I could. And I can do something that's maybe maybe I don't have to go to college and have debt. That's a lingering. Right. A lot of kids are deterred from going to college because of that debt, especially if they're coming from a household that's struggling on a regular basis. Nonetheless, we have a lot of manufacturing jobs, and we have the trades and all types of skills, and a lot of need in our community for those types of jobs as well. Absolutely. Or they could go help them understand that they could go get a certification, pro- go to a certification program, either through Canton Adult Education Programs, Buckeye Career, Stark State College. Mm -hmm. Um, Just focusing on them on on graduating high school is key. So, so many of those programs that provide the mentoring piece help. And we've started, we've started paying attention now to very early education. In fact, on March 2nd, you know, last week mm-hmm. was Dr. Seuss's birthday. That's and right. And we had a Read Across America event where we were reading in the mall to youth young, Love you it. know, preschool. And we've really focused on reading programs. Spark is our program in Stark County that works with parents to help them learn that reading to their children is extremely important. So we're paying attention to the third graders and under because reality and the statistics show that if they're not reading on track by third grade, they'll get lost. Mm. And so we're paying attention to these younger than third graders and really pouring resources and our heart into helping kids learn to read and showing them through adults reading to them and teaching the parents to read to them how important reading is. So they can be all they were created to be. That's it. Absolutely. Awesome. And how do we help you? Mm, wow. Well, number one, you can go to our website and learn more about United Way. We really feel that the more people know about our community, their community, the more they'll care. Mm -hmm. And we thank all of your listeners for caring so very much. And our website website is is www.uwstark.org. So just think about United Way Stark, Mm -hmm. put in UW Stark, and you'll find so many wonderful places that you can volunteer. We have a volunteer center that you can go to. Um, We have often corporate volunteer times. In fact, our day of caring is coming up on May 15th. Mm. And it could be that there's somebody out there listening right now who thinks, wow, I think it'd be great if our workplace would volunteer. And they can do that. Just go to the web and you can actually sign up on our web page. Right there. I would also say there's a great opportunity. Uh, Four times a year this year, we're teaching a workshop called Bridges Out of Poverty. And it really does provide an introduction to uh, working with individuals that have experienced generational poverty mm-hmm. and makes you think differently. It gives you a, a set of con, con, concepts to think about when you're engaging someone. So that's when are great, they? What is taking place? So the first one, I, if you go to our website, it would have all of our dates. But we have one, our first one coming up this year is April 9th. Okay. And it's it's a five hour, five and a half hour workshop. But you receive it's just a we usually have about 40 people that show up and there's some interaction and it looks at how people think differently and and how oftentimes there's a sense of lost hope. Mm. So it's a way to engage someone and establish that relationship and look at how how can you help? How can you make that Mm -hmm. difference? And we find information again at the website? At the website, yes. uwstark.org. Terry Bate, Robin Seaman, thank you for all you do in our community. We're so happy to be here. Thank you for having us.